Previously sold through Striker, C2DX acquired this 2019, the stick pressure monitor for compartment syndrome. I'm gonna go through the setup of it. So this is your the device, this is a reusable device, and then you have disposable components. So you have a pre-filled saline syringe, you have an 18 gauge side ported needle, and then you have your diaphragm chamber. So these three pieces are what will go together to be used per patient, uh, per test. They go together like so. On the diaphragm, there's this red lure lock N that doesn't allow any of the saline within the diaphragm to run back up into your syringe. So this is the side where you will want to throw on that syringe, about a turn and a half until it's tight. And you just wanna make sure your wings or your syringe are flat to the ground um, so they can close within the, the device. And then the 18 gauge side pour needle, I recommend the bevel of the needle facing the ground, facing down, and now it's fully set up. And then you'll wanna turn your device on and on your uh, little pressure reading display, you should see a number between negative eight and positive nine. If you see a number outside of that, that is the, the device running a self-diagnostic test. So if it's 12, 15, negative 10, negative 12, it's basically going to give you an error when you go to hit zero. It's not gonna be able to get to zero. So you wanna make sure you're within that range. So if you turn it on, you see negative six, you see five, you're completely fine to continue the setup. So you'll wanna open up your housing cover and the, the probably one of the more important set pieces to this setup is flushing out your saline or, or preparing your needle when it's inside of the device. I think it's pretty standard to prep a needle, flush out fluid, and then go on for use. Here, you wanna put this in with the diaphragm dry and, and unused, that your cover will snap shut, and then it's just a, a flush of the fluid, hold it up about a 45 degree angle, and you'll slowly flush the fluid through while seeing the diaphragm fill up without any air bubbles get a few drops out, and now it's ready to use. Once you identify where you're going to stick, if it's the anterior compartment and you think it's maybe around a 45 degree angle, right before you poke is when you would wanna hit the zero button. So it's at zero as soon as you're about to go into the compartment. Um, so just for an example, if you're you know this close to the compartment about to poke, you should feel a poke poke, one through the skin, one through the fascia, then I, it would be a 310 cc push of the saline. And again, the only reason for that is to keep a, um, a fluid water column between the interstitial fluid and the fluid within your diaphragm so we can equilibrate. So you don't want any air bubbles, you don't want any skin or tissue that's in the way um, of the bevel of your needle. If you have to do another test or you have to do the lateral compartment, the deep superficial, just anytime you take out and go back in, the only steps to redo would be just re-zero if you change your angle, and then the 310 cc push of saline again. There's four compartments in the lower leg, the anterior, the lateral, the deep posterior, the superficial posterior. The most common is definitely the anterior compartment. If you have a tibial fracture, you're probably gonna start with the anterior, but you can also check all four. Um, a good way to kind of find your landmarks and understand where to go. We'll be starting at the um, patella and kind of your midline and going about a third down the midline. And then it's typically for anterior and for lateral, you're about one to two centimeters laterally um, on your leg. So once you have your setup um, and everything is correct in the monitor, then once you're ready to poke, again, you wanna hit zero directly before you poke. So right before you go on the skin. And if I'm going into the anterior compartment, I would probably go um, right here. Same with all four compartments. Everything depends on the injury and what happened and where it is. Along with adding a 20 gauge needle for a less invasive approach, QR coding to make instructions very seamless and easily accessible, we've just added a team around this product to support it moving forward. So over the last three years, we've grown our team and we're here dedicated to this device to help with questions, help with training, and to ensure all of your products are ready to use in the hospital at all times. Thank you.